English Tim here. Today's video is a comparison part two of my War and Order versus King of Avalon Solar. Now it covers mini games, the chat functions and the like, so hopefully some really helpful information to help you decide which is the best for you. If you've not tried War and Order yet, I've got a link in the description which will take you straight to it, from which I might make a commission. Hopefully that's good with you. Otherwise, please do go to your app store and also I've got a gift code that you can use. Check out later in the video. Now, if you uh, compare just the main events that we've been through there, those are the big sort of big ticket events. But then you've got these sort of mini games the where you can sort of get to another game within this game, but still be playing this game. Now, technically, I guess Solar does have a mini game, and that would be the Path of uh, the Knight of the Lake Path of Legend event. In here, you get to uh, attack in a different sort of take a different army using different uh, using your stats from your main army to attack these other armies. It doesn't require your real army. So, at the mini games here, if I go into the classic version of Castle Wars. Then we have a tower defense game, it's literally built in, I haven't left the game, and the progress I make in the main game greatly affects how well I will do in this game. So it's a tower defense game. So this is an area attack weapon, and then I've got a slowdown item there. You see how the path will spin round. And then we've got the Infinite Wars version of this game as well, which is like a much longer go for as long as you can version of this. It's massive and very exciting. The prizes you get to use, coins that you can go and spend in a shop, and they're very, very valuable in the game. So this mini game really is a huge standalone part of the game, and yet it's integrated inside the game itself. So, I mean, that's for me, that's really awesome. I think the mini games, these. These just stand completely on their own, there's no comparison whatsoever. So there, I've completed that battle, and if I show you now, you can see at the bottom right here that the quality of my buildings, technology, artifacts, the different things in the game that I have affect the quality of my towers. So the more progress I make in the game, the more progress I can make through Castle Wars. And then from here, I've also managed to get the rewards, so let's claim that chest now. I get these items here that will let me improve my games. Now, if you do want to play War and Order, give it a go to see what it's like compared to Solar. I do have a code, so follow the link in the description to download War and Order. And if you're a new player who started after 29th of November, then use the gift code English Tim with a capital E and a capital T, and that will get you some free stuff to get going. I'm in Realm 1433 if you want to come and join me. So, progress on your mini games, that will actually give you progress in your main game, and progress in your main game will give you progress in your mini games. It's it's totally integrated, makes a huge amount of sense to me, that's how a mini game should be. So for me, solar mini games, A they don't exist, or B if they do exist, they're a shadow of those of War and Order. So if I take you back to the mini games now, you can see that sort of castle defense game, compare that to this, I can choose my troops at least in this version, so I can change the balance of my troops, change my heroes, change whether I send my dragon, you want to send your dragon, and then the battle happens. You can see the lives being lost and the ratios, so it does teach you something about the battle mechanics, however I think the graphics again have a huge amount to uh, to speak about. Normally I'd go for fairy, fairy blessings here, however I've not activated fairy blessings, I don't have the, uh, the right level gear, so I'm going to get some more infantry. And then you keep working your way through, the further you get through, the more prizes you have to improve your game. So it does help benefit your game, and your game helps benefit that. I just think it's a lot less interesting than the tower defense games and army assault. So there is also the army assault game in here.
And in here you can send your armies to go and take towers. And you take towers and you battle for uh, full supremacy. So yeah, it's for me, this one is again a really interesting game. And you can upgrade your forts to increase troop, uh, troop production. And you can take towers here which improve your uh, battle statistics. And you can actually switch all the towers from one type to another if you prefer. And I've now completed that battle. You can see the rewards I get to help benefits. So let's improve my lord, and then I've got speed ups to help recruit more troops. So completing this mini game again has linked directly back. Press the back arrow, and I am back into my main game. War and Order is an undoubted better choice. That includes Solar and Lunar. In fact, it has better on both of those two games. Now, if we compare the sort of basic interfaces as well, I think they both work well. There are some benefits to the uh, War and Order where you can uh, have comments that stay. I think it's always quite sad when there's you know, people talking about an interesting conversation that was earlier in the day in World Chat. You may not have checked and it's disappeared on King of Avalon. However, if you uh, go to Hot, for example, you can see those topics that have uh, been most interesting and those stay up for much longer. You can see these are from a few days ago, some of these, 19th of the 12th, so that's from nearly a week ago. And you can keep up with those of uh, the more interesting ones. King of Avalon, we've got the uh, different chat rooms. So you have your kingdom chat here. So you can chat with other people in your kingdom. Then you've got your alliance chat. Again, these are all timestamps. And then you get to a point where they will all disappear. And you can set up private rooms with people in different kingdoms. That's a nice feature. I've had people chatting with me who've been attacking me and then setting a chat just to uh, see how I'm doing. So actually nice to have a chat with somebody you're fighting with. It can make it more interesting. And you can also have uh, private chats as well. So I think I prefer the look of the uh, of the chat here for uh, and also so the only other thing is you can smileys work built into your phone so if you use your phone smiley it will convert it to an in-game smiley and on King of Avalon if you try and use your phone smiley nothing will happen you've actually got to use an external system so I'll bring that up now so if you're chatting and if you want to use a smiley you've actually got to go and finish your message and then click on the smiley button and find one of their ones so it's a much slower process you've got to go through a limited list and find the one that you want and there's no typing in it guessing at the one that you want so it's just a lot less well integrated I think smileys nowadays are really important especially when you've got people from other countries it really helps with just understanding people if you're trying to make a joke you know, put a smiley face with a laughy tear and people understand that you're not being serious you're being sarcastic otherwise it can be lost in translation very very easily so now I'd like to have this integrated on King of Avalon the same way they've got in War on Order I think that chat feature is much better on War on Order also the um, translations you have to click a translation button whereas on War and Order when you click on any chat the translate will automatically be applied now it's perfectly possible you don't want it automatically applied and you might be able to play with your settings but for most people that translation you're gonna to have to keep clicking this button every time somebody talks again it's just not great for uh, for speed of conversation and, and be able to chat with other players so that is my review of the King of Avalon solar game versus War and Order. So again, I think back to my conclusions, if you're enjoying solar, stick with it, love it. If you're thinking that solar, there's something missing, it's not quite game that you thought it would be, please do come to War and Order. I've got a code you can use for new players, that's English Tim. And if you use the link in the description of this video, then that will take you straight to the download. And I may make a commission from you playing that game. So if you're happy with that, that's great. That would support me in future development. If you're not, then please go straight to your app store. That's also absolutely fine. There's loads of events already created in Luna that could be ported over. I'm sure it's a lot of work to do it. However, from my mind, it's work that's got to be done. Try and 
make it a closer match to Luna and potentially consider merging the two games. It's a horribly difficult thing to do. I'm going to do a separate video on how that merger might happen. And I'd love your feedback if you do play Luna and Solar, what your thoughts are about how they could ever be merged. I think it's a tough challenge, but I think it's one that really needs to be followed. So I am English Tim. If you're enjoying my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you can hear about my upcoming videos. I've got loads of videos on King of Avalon, so if you're a Solar player or a Luna player, I've got, got you covered. There's how-to videos, there's also battle videos like this uh, footage I'm showing in the background now. So, thanks for watching my video.